All right, today, welcome to the Pickle Barrel Barn and Books. I'm Jackie Rogers, and this is Shelly Glow, and she is going to show you how to make brisket, corned beef brisket for St. Patrick's Day. And not only that, one of these days, she's actually going to sell this stuff. That's the dream. <laughs> That's the hope. So we will put information down below. So let's get cooking. Let's go. So we're in the kitchen today and we're going to be preparing a corned beef brisket for St. Patrick's Day. My husband is the meat trimmer in the, ha in the family, so I'm going to let him get started. Um, the object here is to just do some general cleanup. So he's going to remove some of the fat, of the hard fat portions like this piece here on the side. Um, and we don't throw anything away in this kitchen. Everything gets used. Everything has a need or has a purpose. Even even this piece of fat will go into um, a, a later recipe. Boston baked beans with brisket um, and makes for great flavor. So don't throw anything away. Everything has a use. And we're gonna just deposit that in a little bowl. Idea here is not to cut away all the fat. You want to leave some of the fat on. It does provide flavor. It renders inside the meat when it's cooking just to clean it up a little bit. Right now he's cutting on the flat portion on this bigger end over here. This is called the point. But like I said, the idea here is not to remove all the fat. You want to leave some of that on. Um, on this side, he's just going to clean up this edge. You want a nice clean edge so that nothing burns. Um, those crispy ends are not desirable. It's a waste of the meat. So he's just going to clean it up and I'll make it all the same general thickness. Again, nothing goes to waste. All of that will be used in a later recipe. Cleaning up this top portion here, it has a sheen on it that's called the silver skin. And you wanna get all of that off. You don't wanna see any of that. You can kinda see where he trimmed here, it's nice and dark versus this part over here that's all shiny. That's called the silver skin. You don't want to leave that on there. You want to make, you want to cut that off. It'll make for tough eating. Removing just a little bit more of that hard fat. bit more of that silver skin on there. Giving a nice little haircut. Just a little off the top.
that end all nice and even there. As much for looks as anything, but don't want those thin pieces that'll burn. Nice even edges for aesthetics. Now we're gonna turn her out. I'll turn her around so you can reach the other side. Nice even edges. What's the starting weight on this and how much are you going to end up with? I believe that this was about 18, 18 and a half pounds and we'll lose about a third. So about six pounds will be rendered out um, between the brining process and the smoking process. And the general trimming. working on that point. The point has more fat in it as you can see from um, the outside of the meat itself than the flat does. <clears throat> the point um, is better for things like tearing it apart and making um, you know like crumbled meat for sandwiches and things. The flat is good for slicing. Depends on what you need. Some people really like the, the point. I really like the thinner finer end of the flat. I like it all. <laughs> it's corn beef's pretty hard to beat anyway, so a nice nice corn beef is, is pretty nice. And then this side is called the fat cap and you want to do just exactly what we did on the other side. This time remove a lot more fat, obviously there's it's quite thick in portions. Um, Trim up the edges to make sure it's all nice and flat and even so we're not getting waste, burnt edges, and then you just trim off some of that fat cap. Again, none of this will go to waste. Uh, brisket makes excellent um, broth and makes wonderful um, stock, and all of this will be used in other recipes. So. some of the smaller stuff on for the flavor. Ooh, a little deep there. I want to leave some of that good fat on there for the flavor. It's super important even in corned beef to have some of the fat left on. <clears throat> it will render out a lot. This is Angus, um, Black Angus, by the way. So, nice quality of meat. And the corned beef doesn't require as much fat as the brisket, so you want to get more of it off there. I was going to ask about that because we don't we haven't done corned beef but we've done brisket and I usually just leave the fat on. So when we're cooking a regular brisket in the smoker more of the fat stays on. You want um, like a quarter inch all the way around. But when we're cooking corned beef nobody wants to bite into a nice slice of corned beef and get away, and come away with a mouthful of fat so he cleans most of that off. And, and it, then there'll it be brines some, better. <clears throat> oh yeah it absorbs the flavor from the brine a lot better too. Do you score the fatter? I've, 
I, that's why I'm removing that top layer is to just give it a chance to absorb into the be able to absorb a little better. Oh, I can't wait to cook that up in the Instant Pot. That is gonna make some fabulous stock and gravy mix. <laughs> kinds of fat that he's taken off here. One is this thick, hard, hard fat. And then there's this more thin, softer, malleable fat. The hard stuff is really hard to do anything with. It doesn't it. render. It doesn't render. It does not render at all. It becomes the grossly stuff that you just can't do anything with, so get rid of that. Um, but the rest of it is what we leave, try to leave on for the flavor and the fat content. Even a corned beef brisket, you don't want it to be completely lacking in fat. It needs that for its flavor and texture. Good job, babe. Not the prettiest, but... Looks pretty to me. It looks pretty to me. It looks like pretty <laughs> tasty is what it looks like. Dinner. Ready for St. Patrick's Day. No. Looks pretty good, dear. Looks pretty good. So today we are making brine for our corned beef. Um, and that involves a few steps. The first thing I need to do is I am going to roast about one cup of our pickling spice and it just goes in the skillet and I wish I had smell-o-vision. You're going to wish you had smell-o-vision here in just a minute. There are 23 different spices in here. Um, we have white pepper and some black pepper and pepper. If I tell you all of my spices, my husband will thump me because it's a family secret. So I'll just have to leave the rest up to your imagination. But it smells really good. So you stir these around and you just want to toast them a little bit. You know they're getting nice and toasted. When you start hearing some of these seeds will actually explode when they get hot. Sounds like popcorn. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> but it really smells good. So you just stir them around. It'll take about three to five minutes to get those nice and brown and ready to go into the brine. Oh, can you smell it? I can. I can smell all of those warm and toasty spices in there. Mm, my favorite part. Delicious. How do you determine how many spices quantity wise? So I use about um, a half a cup of spices per five pounds of brisket. Um, we cut off a good couple of pounds of brisket today, uh, meat and fat, so I'm guessing it's going to be around 12, 12 pounds, 13 pounds. So this is about my guesstimate for spices, about a half a cup per, per five pounds. Need to be a little bit more um, exact when it comes to the rest of the brine. Oh, do you hear it popping and snuffling? Tasty, toasty. Smells good. Just like popcorn, but it smells better. Okay, take those off the heat. Magic television, right? When it comes to the rest of the brine, you have to be a little bit more specific. So I'm going to need about a full gallon of brine to cover all of my brisket meat. So this is only half of it. But for a full gallon of um, brine, you're going to want um, a half a cup of um, tender quick. You're going to want a full cup of sugar and a full cup of sea salt. And then 
Your job is to stir and boil all of this until it's completely dissolved, which again doesn't take too terribly long, but it does need to come to a full boil to make sure all the salt and the tender quick and everything in there is dissolved. Now the tender quick is the trick to making corned beef. The tender quick is what imparts that pretty pink color that we all associate with corned beef. And we just use Morton Tender Quick. But there are many different kinds of Tender Quick or saltpeter out there. I can't find it. There, there we go. Good old Morton Salt Girl. You also can use sort of Prague powder or plain old saltpeter, but we use Tender Quick. It's what's easiest to find around here. So I take all those pretty spices that I roasted up and I put them into the brine. Mm -hmm. Let me bring that to a boil and another part of the smell good part because my house is going to smell like heaven for about three days after this. And you just bring it to a boil, stir in all those tasty ingredients. And once you got everything boiled and stirred in, you let it cool. You do not want to pour anything warm over the meat. It needs to be cooled. I generally do that by adding as much ice as I have water. Doesn't that look like a tasty soup? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh. Here we are back in the kitchen and we're at the point where we need to cool the brine. Never ever pour hot brine over your beautiful brisket. All you're going to do is make it tough. So I have a solution of water and ice and I'm just going to add that to my pan. You want to hand me my spoon, dear, that I left across the room? Thank you. Make sure that's nice and stirred in there and the solution is nice and cool without spilling. Okay, and then Simply cover the meat. Then we're going to cover up this little container for a week, stirring daily. And it will brine for seven to ten days. Uh, brine penetrates one half inch a day, so you need to make sure that you are accounting for your thickest portion of the meat, which is the, the point over here, and it will also get turned several times a day. Um, all that tasty goodness is now trapped in the side there and it's going to be absorbed and, and we'll have a beautiful brisket in about ten days.